The Painting Triangles sweater is my newest sweater pattern, and I love the fit of this design and how fun it is to customize with color for all those painted triangles in the yoke. So this sweater I use DK weight yarn, and I'm wearing Walk Collection Merino DK. It's one of my go-to sweater yarns because it's quick to knit with that DK thickness, and it's really soft, and it wears really well. So a lot of my sweaters and shawls that I knit with Walk Collection Merino DK, they look just like I knit them yesterday. It doesn't pill very much, and it just yeah lasts forever and has really crispy stitches. So I'm wearing the Twister colorway from Watt Collection Merino DK. It's this really like oil slicked brown with hints of red and blue and green and purple in it. It just has all these fun colors. So I took that as my inspiration color, as the main color, and then I pulled colors from it to coordinate those colors in the yoke. So that's a really fun way to start your color palette journey. If you have those hand painted yarns, take something that has lots of colors in it and use that as the main color and pull those little color pops from it. And I used solid, semi-solid colors that were more bright and light so that they would contrast against that dark color. So I'm really happy with the fit of this. And I find that those slip stitches when you're making this painting triangle sweater, they give a little bit more structure to the yoke and the shoulders. So I just love how this feels. It doesn't feel too sloppy or loose. It's got this nice, confident, sturdy feeling to the fabric. So it's really fun to knit and it's all knit seamlessly. So get the recommended yardage. You'll find in the pattern that there's nine sizes and look at the main color yardage. That's the most important. Getting enough skeins and yardage for your main color. And then I just used less than one skein for each contrast color. They're really small bits of yarn that you need. So for those contrast color pops, there's three triangles and you could even use your leftovers. So look at those yardage requirements, especially for that first triangle. It uses just a little bit of yarn. You could dive into your knitting basket and choose some leftovers for those pops or just get one skein each. So I have some palettes that uh, I'm inspired by. We have a lot of kits at Stephen and Penelope. So we put some inspirational palettes together for you if you wanna knit your own painting triangle sweater with Westwool Tandem. This is a really crispy DK weight yarn. It's a non-superwash wool. So it's gonna give you that nice lofty structure to your sweater. And I love this warm palette. This is our white peach colorway, cardamomma, berry, and tiger. So when you're picking the colors, there's four total colors, and what is your main color gonna be? I really like if the main color is the most different from the contrast colors. That'll give you a really good contrast. So I'm looking at these. These are all really juicy and saturated, and this one's really different and very light. So I think this white peach would make a really great main color with those bold, saturated triangle pops. Cardamom, berry, tiger. So that would be a really fun color story for a warm kind of autumn palette. If you want to switch it up, we could take the darkest color. Ooh, if you like more saturation and the overall appearance of your sweater, then take that berry and that juicy red. That's what's going to be next to your face on the collar and the sleeves and the body. And that's really juicy. And then let those other pops be the triangles. So if you're working with solid yarns, you're gonna get that really crispy texture and contrast with the triangles, but you can use some hand-painted splashy yarns as well because the motifs are so large, I don't think the stitches and pattern work is gonna to get too disguised, even if you have speckled or variegated yarns. But if you're working with a variegated, like this twister colorway I used, I wouldn't use another variegated for the triangles. So where if something's splashy, choose something solid or more crisp to contrast against it. But I love that warm palette. And then I pulled this blue palette as well. This is the Marinier colorway, this dark blue. It's like a super deep navy. And we have Norway, this beautiful teal, aquamarine, this bright blue, and glass is the light, fresh, icy blue. So I think these three as triangle pops would be really fun. And then the dark Marinier colorway as the main color. So lots of fun possibilities. When in doubt, you can stick in the same color family and just get lots of blues, lots of warm colors. If you're feeling extra spicy, you could start mixing up your palette and maybe do something more mixed. I think that would be really fun. More contrast 
with different colors from other families. But uh, get creative with your colors for this, and I'd love to see your progress. So you can use the, ha use the hashtag painting triangle sweater to share all your sweater progress on Instagram. And uh, yeah, get the pattern. It's available on Ravelry and Westnitz.com. So it just came out, and it has a lot of nice features, I-cord bind-offs to the body and the sleeves, and I include notes in all my sweaters on how to customize the length. So it gives you a good starting point with nine sizes. Check your size, customize the length. You can knit more yoke rows if you want, or knit the sleeves as long as you want. So it's a really easy pattern to customize in that way because it's got a little bit of technique with those slip stitches for the yoke, but then the rest is so simple. It's kind of like a waffle broken rib texture for the body and sleeves. And I just love that. It's really easy to do, but it's not just stockinette stitch. So you get to pay attention a little bit with those knits and pearls, but it's still a really easy couch TV knitting type of project. So the last thing I want to leave you with for the painting triangle sweater, which is really important, is to get a sweater that fits, is to check your gauge, okay? I don't participate in the gauge lifestyle all the time, but honestly, you can just cast on your sweater and then use that as your swatch. You can just use the yoke as your swatch and see how your stitches are going. But uh, to be the safest, check your gauge and knit a little swatch. And the best way to check your gauge is to do it in the round, if you're gonna do a sweater in the round. You can cheat and do a flat gauge swatch. It's gonna be pretty close, but the best way to do a gauge swatch is to knit in the round, you know, cast on like 60 stitches or so, or 50 stitches or so, and then just knit the stitch pattern recommended for your gauge, and then try to get a close gauge. If you're not exactly on gauge, it's okay, but try to get within about a stitch of my recommended gauge so you can compare it to the size that you wanna knit. So after you try to get a similar gauge to mine, you gotta choose your size. And the best thing to get a good sweater fit, I think, is if you want a relaxed sweater fit, don't pick the size that is your chest circumference, okay? What I list in my patterns as the chest circumference is the actual sweater. And if you want a relaxed sweater, like the one I'm wearing now, you want a looser fit. So pick a size in the pattern that's larger than your actual chest bust circumference. So if you're 40 inches around here, you want to do a 44 inch or even a 46 inch sweater size if uh, you want that loose fit. If you want your fit sweater to be fitted, then you could pick your actual chest circumference as your size and then you won't have any ease. But that's after gauge, that's the most important thing to getting a good sweater fit. Looking at the chest circumference, measuring yours, measure it right around here, right around your chest, and uh, pick a size that's larger than what you measure. So I'm about 44 inches around, so I usually go to like 48 or even 50 inches for my sweater sizes. So about 4 inches is uh, 10 centimeters is a good relaxed fit. If you want it even more baggy and loose, you can go six, 15 centimeters, six inches, 15 centimeters bigger than your actual measurement. But take some time to check your gauge, measure yourself out, see where you're sitting, and then pick a size that's a little bit bigger to get that roomy, roomy fit. I'm really happy with the fit of my sweater because I checked my gauge and I made sure that I knit a size that was a little bit bigger and, uh, my mentality when I'm picking my sweater sizes, I'm usually a more, ge more generous these days because, you know, a year or two from now, I want to invest in my future, you know, have a little bit of room to grow. So I like picking a size that's a little bit larger so it's just more relaxed and uh, I'm not going to outgrow it anytime soon. So I hope these tips helped you with the painting triangle sweater. Again, I'll link all those pattern link references where you can get the pattern down below. And uh, there's a lot of other fun patterns coming this year. So I hope you'll stay tuned and enjoy this fun new seamless sweater. There's going to be a lot of really cool sweaters coming later this year. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.